Yeah, okay, mate. Uh, yeah, sorry for late reply on this. I was out yesterday. Um, I did reply a little bit yesterday, but uh, let's look into this. Uh, you're interested in a long-term position, and uh, you're asking what settings I use on the indicator. Well, the settings I use are always changing depending on, on the market and depending on the pattern itself. That is one aspect about the indicator that makes it a little bit tricky at times. Because the market is dy dynamic and the market is always changing, like this move is different from this move and this move is different from this move and this move is different from this move, all indicators and, and everything else are always not always going to be the same in every move. So basically what you do need to do is you know, adjust this and find what's working in the market by tweaking and fine tuning this to see you know what is working in the market uh, this can then be you know your kind of own personal trading analyst in a way your own trading bot so to speak or a helper or a guide or a you know one of those sort of things if you can kind of imagine it like a like you're picking a lock and you got to twist and f fine tune the little little knobs on it to finally crack the lock by just tweaking and, and, and uh, moving the settings, uh, that will help you crack what the market is doing. And you know, you want what you want to do is you want to find a spot in the market where the bulls or the bears uh, are going to be broken. For example, you know, here the the bulls, uh, and and we could refine that back a little bit. Uh, you know, the, but the 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 bulls, uh, the bears were broken here. As you can see here on the chart the bears got completely broken here yes it wasn't a low on the chart but the bears got completely broken here and then the bulls took over and pushed it higher and that's sort of the thing that you want to try and do now uh we, we obviously could refine that back a little bit and see what what it's telling us so you, then you can kind of see here well it, it started to give you indications here that it was trying to flip green and then the dips coming off that green, this little little bit of green here was kind of giving you an indication. But then, you know, if it was green here, it's kind of showing you it wants to flip green. But if you've seen the pullback off that, you can be thinking, well, you know, if this bounces here, this indicator is going to flip green and, and you can get the move. So it is kind of giving you that point in the market where, uh, where, where it might be a little bit safer to entry. Now, this is not even the best example at all because uh, well, this is a daily chart, number one. We, we could really break this down to a four-hour chart and get a better visual, visual representation of it. Uh, but this is also in a very strong downtrend and a very strong bear market. So these are bear market bounces. But even in the bear market bounce, it could have uh, you know, netted some profits out of that. You know, e even if you did buy here late, you, know, you were never in that much of a loss, considering it's a daily chart and it was a 40% bounce. But in this situation, even if you do get analysis and you, uh, for example, and, and we can do that right now. So there's the, there's the bounce and there's the area. Uh, if we just broke it down to smaller time frames, for example, and broke it back and went to a four hour chart, you can then go into a four hour chart and refine that again a little bit. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best setting for getting in early. But if you are looking for those longer term tra trends, uh, you know, the, the, 100, the 50 to 100 setting can be good to filter out the noise. Um, there's a four hour chart and it's on, I, I've just clicked it to 100. Uh, I could try a bit higher, but 100 uh, seems to be a reasonable number for, you know, finding those longer term trends. But you can kind of see here that, uh, you know, the sentiment is rising here in on that 100. But you start flipping green here, so it, it is here. Uh, it may you may not think it's the best entry or all at all. But of course, there was ways to get in earlier if you drop the the sentiment down uh, down to fifty or even thirty five or whatever. You could have got in earlier. Um, but when it does flip on the one hundred, it is a decent sign of strength. And you can see, you know, from there, of course, we chopped kind of th we went higher first and then kind of pulled back a bit, but. The, the, the market then finally ran. So that's just some little tips that uh, the way I try and use it. You know, for example, uh, I, I just zoomed out a little bit. That's the part we were looking at. But you can see the strong, 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 strong downtrend uh, in the bear market. 
but you can see this is kind of you know it's rising here it's rising yes there was a spike here and the spike was actually the very lows um, but if you look at it there's a massive bullish divergence right this price is substantially lower right but the, the, the there's a bullish divergence here and then from that bullish divergence it actually caused a really really nice bounce now you could have attempted to play the bullish divergence if you would have seen this because there's a large volume on this as well actually there's a, a bit of a capitulation volume but even if you waited and you kind of seen flipping green here or flipping green here uh, while while it's rising here you could have attempted to get on the market there and uh, you know you can kind of see that there was a nice bounce into that then and that's all you need to make a good trade there's a daily oh sorry it's a four hour chart actually uh, but we flip green here right this is the second time we flip green um, and the there was a 27 percent bounce but the fact that there was weakness in the bears like there was not a lot of bears here left so it flipped green and then you had a small dip in sentiment there was a decent dip in price but the sentiment was actually uh, f strong like there was not a big dip there uh, so the fact that that was very minuscule of a dip here uh, kind of uh, alluded to that the bounces could be biased because then this could bounce and go higher because it would flip green and the sentiment would then be bullish and, and you got that move now on top of that it's good to look at the price action as well because you can kind of see there's a bit of a a very slight bullish stop on here right is, well is it a double bottom or a stop on i'm not sure actually i need to get and refine that and have a look um so yeah i think it is a very slight bullish stop on now that line is not true properly but here yeah see this bullish stop on here so you get this bullish stop on on very uh very minuscule sentiment while it was rising and that is also a key factor that the fact that any bounce at all could then flip it green and if it flips green it could run so that's that understanding that stop point combined with this understanding of the sentiment uh, of rising sentiment uh, can can give you very good low risk reward entry points into the market to then uh, anticipate this flipping green and and moving higher and that was a 27 percent bounce of course before uh, it ended up failing and rolling over there was a, sp a spike here and then there was a divergence here uh, not really a divergence actually it was a lower high that's a lower high and that's a lower high that's a lower high that's a lower high but it was showing weakness and slightly showing weakness but um yeah and of course you could try and refine selling up here by lowering you know from 100 because 100 is a very high setting and drop that down to 50 or 35 or or, or even 20. uh maybe, maybe we'll just just to view it right now i'll just drop it to 35 just for a visual representation to see what happened so you can see here there was a very big spike in sentiment but this spike was a lot lower uh showing signs of weakness up in here because sentiment is rising 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 stay in the trade stay in the trade stay in the trade stay in the trade but here while the price is basically a double top but you have a massive weakness in sentiment here and uh and that then allowed you to understand that the market was getting weak and then you can see considering we were already in a bear market and you know from there of course uh, the price dropped 50 percent in, into that but by reading the sentiment uh you know you have a better understanding of the chart and of understanding the bulls and the bears and potentially telling you what's going to happen before it actually happens just like you could have started to tell that the market was getting bullish uh here if you can combine that's another thing i just want to say uh before i start if you can combine a capitulation right with rising sentiment and then all uh, uh, trying to flip green that can be a very good recipe for buys and uh, uh i'll just let you on a little secret that we may be trying to create some sort of alert around those but when we build it we'll re release it to the group we'll, we'll, we'll combine uh it'll be a it'll be a capitulation alert with sentiment ideally anyway we're, we're going to work towards something like that as well that'll be one of the types of alerts maybe but it's not easy to do that it's not easy to build that because uh well you know it can always be different here like the spike is actually the very lowest point here in this in the sentiment but anyway you know we're going to try we're going to see how we go this is a long video and i've not actually even got to your uh looking at pixel yet so just uh zoomed out very quickly here uh what is very nice about pixel is that the fact that 
this is a bit of a pressure cooker, right? This is a potential bullish pressure cooker because the fact that we have broke out uh, of it on rising sentiment. That's exactly what you want to see when you're breaking out of a pressure cooker, okay? Uh, when you're in a pressure cooker here, what you want to look for is raising sentiment. Uh, we are on setting 35 for now, okay? Raising sentiment. Let's, I just want to see the top end. Uh, well, 100 is not the top end, but I just want to see what it's like. Yeah, okay, so this is perfect. This is exactly what you want to see in pressure cookers. You want to see raising sentiment here in a pressure cooker uh, here, right? There's also a beautiful bullish stop on it, right? So it, it actually was flawless. This is raising with a bullish divergence because you stop onto these lows. So not only is the stop onto amazing, uh, the raising sentiment is fantastic. And then because you flip green even here before you broke out. Now, finding those pressure cookers and looking for this exact uh, setup with with eight, with a hundred with a hundred um, setting here uh, is you know I've I've been looking at these and it is fantastic and it works a lot of the time if you can find the raising sentiment while you're inside this pressure cooker and then that obviously give a very very nice buy to the upside if you even if you got in here and didn't get in that early I mean that's still twenty five percent points potentially and still up fifteen percent. But this, this looks to be consolidated in, in a bullish manner. Sentiment seems to be still strong so far, at least. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just saying it's good to look out for these. Now what I will say is that sometimes the first attempt at an apex can fail. Now, the question here is, was this the first time or is all of this the first time? You know, is this gonna move up a little bit and then fail and come back down? And allow these moving averages to curl curl down and then price comes back up into it and gets the real move okay so uh or is was this the real move and now we're moving up into the apex and then price holds and then you break out of the real apex okay so that's kind of what we need to find out breaking this is a daily chart by the way and breaking into apexes means that the white 100 moving average needs to hold what I will suggest though is that the red 200 moving average is still a long way away from price, meaning that the apex does need some development. But what would be really good is if the bearish sentiment is mostly gone out of the chart. You can see the downtrending nature of the of the bearish sentiment throughout this bear market. And then it is now, you know, be trying to be a lot more bullish and have a lot more time on the top end of the spectrum rather than the down end of the spectrum, meaning that you can go into bull trends. I just changed the setting there to 35, uh, just to get a, a little bit quicker, just to see what's going on here. It is, what's very good about it so far is that there was not much bearish sentiment left in the market. Even on this decent drop, there was no bears. So we are currently bullish. This is still okay and we want to see if this is going to continue to rise so because you're in a bullish uh slight, slightly bullish environment at least and there was no bears here after after this rise uh what it is suggesting is that there is the potential to be trading a new two week candle because it is looking strong okay now if we so that that's without even looking at the two week chart now by looking at the two week chart we can now see that this is looking very good in the fact that this sentiment was saying that we were bullish and this is looking like wants to do something like this this is a base and this is a bullish engulfing candle with a bullish two-week stop hunt implying that this is bullish and wants to go higher so sentiment was confirming that so it is suggesting that small dips on a new week or buys to then buy to f to to flip green and see where this can actually run to so it is suggesting yeah this is looking good to g get a pop higher now if we do look at that weekly chart uh i just want to kind of just draw a little bit down here just below that yellow nine ema just to see this area uh i just want to kind of go into the smaller time frames now and just have a look to see so where i drew that uh is dips down here would kind of mean that you know, if something like that's going to happen, you, you would want to be watching this sort of stop on level. Um, 
you know, if there was a flush below that, I would have alarm set here, right? At that 14.67 level. It's a big, big level on the chart if, if we get it. The, but the, the, the truth is though, I kind of like this structure, right? It, it's, it's almost showing like a, this, this was a bottom and then this is a breakout and we're trying to actually, you know, go again. A lot of times I personally don't like to be buying too much on a Sunday. Uh, and I prefer, like uh, the day before I knew to be candle is what I'm saying, uh, in the hope that this doesn't run in, on time and then trade that new to be candle. That, that's, that's my preference. But the truth is, this is actually looking pretty strong on the daily. Like, I mean, I mean, intraday, it's up 2% today. There's a chance this could run maybe up 5% today if, if this holds, because there's not a lot of, uh, yeah, well, apart from these top three coins, there's not a lot of strength today. Yeah, Ape is flying. The problem, you know, the, the, the tricky part about it is, you know, you want a long-term position, but the stop loss to the, to the previous weekly lows uh, well, the previous weekly lows was like 20% away, and it's 15% there. So it's, it's uh, it, to me, it makes sense to try and buy the dip in a new two-week candle, uh, because if it's going to run, you know, there should only be a small dip on a new two-week and then flip green, which allows you to put your stop loss below that at, at the ideally limited, uh, limited uh, amount of risk. But I, I'm going to watch this myself, and uh, so I, I think, yeah. I, uh, this is a very good chance of going higher and we should try and trade this uh, possibly Monday or Tuesday. And in the meantime, hope that it doesn't run today up that uh, up another few percent. So I have a long video. I will let you know that the analysis starts after the 10 minute mark. No need to watch it all if you don't want.